Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Final K, and today I'm bringing you guys the King Arthur guide for the solo lane. Uh, King Arthur has been like one of the most OP gods God releases in a while, um, but he's actually a really fun character and he's very unique. He has a lot to his kit, uh, so I just kind of want to go through it and kind of teach everyone how to play King Arthur for those who are wondering or don't know how to play it. So I'm just going to go D, D real quick. Um, so I'm just going to go through the basics. We're going to read over his abilities a little bit, kind of give you a, um, a brief description of each ability. And then I am going to kind of get into the more um, complex stuff, um, his build, and basically what you want to be doing with him, um, and the most optimal way to play him, and some of his auto cancel and stuff like that. So, uh, first and foremost, we'll go through his abilities. So his passive, um, his bat, his passive is basically uh, kind of like Kukulin. If you play Kukulin or are familiar with him, um, he stacks up energy. In the case of Kukulin, it's rage, but in the case of uh, King Arthur, it's energy, and it contributes it contributes to his ultimate. And if he gets a certain amount of uh, energy, one second. Um, so if he gets a certain amount of energy, then it actually changes the way his ultimate works. It becomes a, a basically kind of like a Neja ultimate. Um, and next patch, it will not do true damage, but it becomes a, like a Neja ultimate. It takes somebody into the air, CCs them, banishes them, and does a lot of damage to them. Um, and that's where King Arthur is like really, really strong. So I kind of wanted to explain that before I got into his normal abilities because his passive is very much tied to his ultimate, but you also get damage mitigation um, through your passive. So if you hit people with abilities, you get up to four stacks. So if you hit people, uh, four people with four abilities, or you know four separate people with uh, each ability, then you'll get up to 6% damage mitigation, um, which is kind of overlooked with uh, King Arthur. I mean, most people just think his passive is for the energy on his ultimate, which is the important part, but still damage mitigation is nice. So. The way King Arthur works, he's really the only character that is like this. There are stance switchers in Smite, but King Arthur is a um, unique stance switcher because I'm just going to set my level 20 real quick and then grab all four of my abilities. The way King Arthur works is in order to stance switch, he has to use an ability. So if I am in my combo stance, which is the yellow, I use an ability, I switch back to my blue, which is a standard stance. And then if I hit it again, then I'll go back to my yellow. I use my one in my yellow stance, it goes back to my blue, and so on and so forth. So. He's the only character in Smite that works like that. Um, there's like six, I think, maybe five or maybe less than that. Maybe like five stance switchers in Smite. I'm not really too sure. I, I'm kind of just off the top of my head. And King Arthur is one of them, but he's the only character that works in this way. Um, and it really fits his playstyle as well. I mean, the reason that he's, the reason that it's like this is because he wants to be in the middle of a fight, so he's going to be often spamming his abilities. So um, it makes perfect sense for him to have to use an ability to switch back to another stance because most of the time, the most optimal way to play him is just hit the ability that is up, uh, the uh, whatever ability is up, then you can use it on someone. So um, very interesting in that manner. So we'll go through his abilities real quick. So in his combo stance, so this is the, the combo stance, the yellow stance. Uh, his one is a little cone ability. I'm going to put everything on normal cast just so I can hover over these things because I play on instant cast. You guys know this. So uh, hello? Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't refresh. OK, I guess it doesn't refresh for some reason. Let me see again. Okay. Yeah, for some reason it's not doing it. But basically, um, so his one in uh, blue stance, I guess, is just an align ability that I'll use real quick. Um, and it damages people, but the closer they are to it, there's a little area um, really close. The closer they are to it, it will do increased damage. So if you can group up the minions and hit them right in the, the near um, like targeter for it, then it's going to do increased damage and really help either player. And then in the yellow stance, it's a cone ability that switches out. does a lot of damage, but it also cripples whoever you hit for, I think, like one second. Cripple duration 1.25. Okay, so 1.25. It's not that long of a cripple, but you can use it to like interrupt people's dashes that are like long dashes like Vaman and Ardia or something like that. Just two examples off the top of my head. You can really easily cripple those. So that's how those two work. Remember that all of your abilities that you hit on an enemy um, gain energy. Um, with his one, it's three energy, and then with his Battle Stomp, which is 2, which is like your main energy gaining ability, it's 4, and then with your 3, it's 1.5. Um, so going through his 2, his 2 is just a, it's a slow, but it also does damage, so if I 2 them, it'll slow them. It's very quick, and it's really good for auto cancels. Um, it does a little bit of damage, but it's also really nice for the energy gain. And then the yellow stance 2, which is uh, one of his best abilities, is a uh, line dash knockup, um, and it does damage as well. And it actually does damage to minions, the, the line dash knockup. Both of them do damage to minions. Pretty much every single one of, one of his abilities does damage to minions, but it's really awkward, the line damage, uh, the combo one on this, to hit with minions. Um, so you don't really use it on minions too much. Then his three and his blue stance. Normal stance is just a little line dash attack that hits twice. Um, it's really nice for the protection tread as well it has on it. But 
uh, the, the like the best part of is three is the the combo stance three because it's a lot of damage and there's a final hit on it that does a lot of damage as well um, and it's really nice for just being in the center of a fight and just being hectic and being hard to like kind of lock down because you're moving around and get increased uh, um, movement speed I'm pretty sure on it maybe not though um, so those, those are hit those two and then the regular stance ultimate which actually has a cooldown on it um, is his jab and it stuns whoever he hits with it so if I hit both of them it would have stunned both of them um, and it's a, it's a decent ability, but there's a cooldown on it. Um, but if you get your energy up, I'm going to have to grab some energy real quick. I'm going to go hit these bots real quick, just so I can get my energy back up so you guys can see what his combo ultimate is like. So just getting my energy up here by hitting people. Okay, there we go. So now I have my combo stance ultimate. Um, and like I said at the beginning of this, that's, this is really where he shines, this is his best ability, and it's honestly kind of broken right now. It's going to be uh, more balanced next patch because it's not going to have true damage on it, but um, that's basically what it does. So like I said, it takes you up in the air, it's a banish, and it does a lot of damage. Um, and it's really good for Arthur, and the reason I think it's so good on Arthur is that he's one of these characters that wants to be spamming abilities throughout a fight and constantly be in the middle of things, and it's just an ability that will take him to, into the air and kind of let him reset and let him get his cooldowns back. That's like the main... Uh, part of it that's like really nice is that you're going to be in the air for like three seconds and it's going to allow you to get your cooldowns back when you have uh you know a lot of cooldown here in the air so yeah that's pretty much it that's how arthur works i'm going to show you like some of the mechanics about him some of his auto cancels and just kind of like the, the best combos and everything for him but first i'm going to go through his build so since this is for the soul lane the way you're going to be starting pretty much every game is you're going to be warrior's blessing because it's very good now plus round shield and then just going three health pots because that's all you can afford um, with 1500 gold this is gonna cap you out and make it so you have zero gold and then you're gonna be going to teleport you don't have to go teleport on every god in the game right now uh, in solo but i highly recommend that you go it on arthur because it allows you to rush glad shield which is your biggest power spike in the game and it's going to make it literally impossible for you to lose a trade unless you're being a noob and um it's gonna be really hard for them to gank you and if they ever do you're gonna be able to 1v2 and stuff like that because this is just like probably the best power spike in the game for anyone once you get glad shield in, it's just going to allow you to be able to stay in lane for as long as possible with this teleport. So um, that's what you're going to be rushing. However, you can go this if you feel like you're going to get poked out really hard. So you're in a matchup that's going to be like really hitting you hard early on, like level one, level two, level three, such as like Herc maybe or something like that, maybe Achilles. Then you can go um, this start, but you're still going to be rushing the glad shield. And you're just doing this just in case you have to use a few more extra pots. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, you're going to be going into the glad shield, and then my preferred. Uh, build path is literally what it says right here the core I go warrior tabi into blackthorn um, You can go tank boots on Arthur even Teleria, but I much prefer warrior tabi just because I think it really helps the damage through all your abilities I mean they all um, do scale so the more that you hit them the more extra damage you're getting from this warrior tabi But it's not completely wrong you go reinforce creeps and it's perfectly fine um, and then also another item that's right here is Void Shield. You do have to be a little bit uh, scared here of like their magical damage if they have like three, so you don't have to go that there. You can go with the, the Genjis, but you definitely want to be going Genjis at some point in the build. Just because Genjis on Stance Switchers is a really broken item just because it reduces the um, all of your abilities by three seconds. And as Stance Switchers, you have basically six abilities, eight abilities, whatever it is. Um, so only go Genjis here if you have to worry about their magical damage ASAP. If I not, you can go into Void Shield, then into your Genjis. And then this last item is kind of situational, but most of the time you're just going to be going Mantle. Um, and then late game, since this is Conquest and you're playing solo, you can sell your boots for whatever you really need at this point. It could be a Magi's, maybe it could be a damage item like Crusher because you have eight damaging abilities. Um, it could be just something like a movement speed item like Masamune, just gives right, you a little bit more damage and allows you to be more tanky. Um, but basically you're going to be keeping your glad shield throughout the entire game just because even if they have anti-heal It's still really nice to have in the, in the team fight because you're gonna be spamming your abilities so much So this is pretty much the core build that I would go on him uh, pretty much every game You can go a little bit of a different build with like breastplate and stuff just because he is really really good with cooldown But you will have full CDR with this build at the end of the game And I just I pr much prefer this build because you do so much damage at this point in the game if You just look at these you're really tanking you do a ton a ton of damage with these items You're at 115 power so um, you're gonna be one shotting, one shotting their squishies, and then of course let me just buy these. A true king is not real quick, afraid not, to take not in this order, of course. But um, the second relic, I almost always go blink. Um, and the reason for this, it's kind of like Neja. If you can get your charge up to have your charge ultimate, um, then you're gonna be able to blink charge ultimate somebody right at the start of the fight, and it's just a really, really nice initiation. It's enforced active, and it's just gonna allow you to be in the middle of everything. That's why I really like blink, just to get into 
the middle of their backline and everything, everything like that. Um, but you don't have to go blink, and sometimes you might want to look to go beats because King Arthur, apart from his uh, charged ultimate, his combo ultimate, the yellow one, he doesn't have any CC immunity in his kit, and he can kind of get locked down with cripples and long duration like CCs and stuff like that because he doesn't have these CC immunity, right? And he relies on a lot on his movement abilities because his three in yellow stance is a movement ability, his three in blue stance is a movement ability, his two in combo stance is a movement ability, so any cripple is really going to mess with you when it comes to that. So you can look to go beads. Those two are probably the two most common. Um, you can go thorns, but I don't really like thorns too much on him just because you're going to be taking somebody in the air and they're not going to be able to hit you during that entire time. So it's kind of pointless. And then you can look to go some of these other relics if you really need it, like Aegis if they have like a crack in Kursonk if they're relying a lot on their healing, then you can upgrade it and do uh, increased damage. But most of the time, we're going to be going blink on King Arthur. Um, and yeah, that, that pretty much covers his build. You can kind of switch some items out here and there. So maybe they have like, a, they're relying a lot on their auto attacks. So um, you maybe you don't want to go void shield. You just want to go straight into that mid guardian just to make it as tanky as possible. You would do a little less damage, but void shield is just like an overall good item. So maybe um, their magical isn't too much. Like you don't have to worry about it too much. So you, you really just need Genji's for it. And then you can have like mid guardian there instead. Um, you can do stuff like that. But for the most part, this will be pretty core build. Um, that pretty much covers that though. Uh, so I just want to go over some of his mechanics and how his abilities work and his combos and stuff like that. So Arthur has like really cool auto cancels and I, I guess I, I should explain how his autos work. So King Arthur doesn't have, he doesn't benefit from attack speed. Attack speed doesn't do anything to his autos and his autos are also unique. Like, like I said, with the, um, his like stance switching abilities and stuff like that. He's the only character in the game that does this, but he can lock onto characters. So if I'm standing all the way back here and I auto forward, it will launch to the person nearest to me and I'll actually hit them with it. So it's like a lock on auto. Um, if you hold S or whatever your, your backspace or your back step is, um, key bound to in auto, you won't launch forward. So that's just something really useful that you can use when you're like, you're really not trying to just move forward, such as like you're at tower line, say, at tower line like which is right here and you don't want to go into their tower and get it hit by a tower shot you can backstep in auto and you won't be launched into their tower and take a tower shot for no reason but yeah so king arthur works like that and this is really a nice advantage at level one um if you're fighting somebody i'm just gonna reset my level at level one if you're fighting somebody and he's running away this odin i'm not sure if this guy has like movement speed or how it works but um i wasn't holding w right there so if i'm holding w and auto i actually launch toward them like that so um, it's pretty easy to like stick to somebody as far as his autos go. Um, but also, because his autos work like that, you can auto uh, you can auto cancel all of your abilities, and you can make space with it. So you can use your autos to maybe like kind of like a pseudo dash. You can use them as, and then you can use an ability to instantly cancel it. So I'll show you what that looks like right here. So I'm gonna auto three, auto two, two, cancel it, and then auto three. So basically, towards the end of the auto. If you use an ability, it'll cancel out the, the auto animation and then put you into that ability. And you can cover a lot of ground with that. But not only that, it allows you to auto cancel your enemy. So like this. And then something like that. Basically just weaving in autos in between all of your abilities. Um, let me go get reduced cooldown real quick just so I can show you guys. Actually, I shouldn't do this. I get re reduced cooldown and I'm going to switch back between stances and have my abilities up, which I don't want. So... I'll do it one more time and you can do this any way you really want to you can do this when you're running out of the base if you're just trying to uh, gap close if you're trying to chase somebody down anything like that you can just auto and then move your abilities into it and you'll cover a lot of distance with it so um and like i said you want to be in the middle of a fight especially with glad shield and when you have like these three items alone let me go back to the fountain so i can sell them when you have these three items alone you're at like 30 cdr if you have your blue buff this is a huge power spike for you, and it, you're going to heal a lot, and it's going to allow you to 1v2 if they don't have anti-heal, even 1v3 in some scenarios, um, just because you can put yourself into the air a lot of the time. So um, uh, once you have this power spike, you want to be looking to fight, looking to proxy, looking to just really take advantage of the fact that you're going to be very, very hard to kill. So I'm just going to use some, like, produce some, like, combos on this Neath. Um, the... Really, honestly, the best way to play, play King Arthur most of the time is just be spamming your abilities while you auto cancel in between them. It's going to give you the most DPS, and it's just going to be like that's really just the best way to play him. I mean, once your abilities up, you use them. Um, however, one of the like the best combos, or at least the most efficient ways way to use one of his abilities, is his uh, Yellow Stance Two. Since it is a knockup, you want to use it as a confirmation for your ultimate. Because if I just walk up and ult this knee, 
if they have any reaction time or possibly even have their beads up, they can just beads it, and then I'm then my charge ult is gonna be down, and it's gonna be down for a while, and I'm gonna have to charge my stuff back up. So let me go grab my charge ult real quick. I need to get it back. So the main combo you want to be looking for as I get my energy back. Keep in mind that your autos also stack your, your energy, so you're gonna be looking for that. Throughout a team fight, or even like maybe before a team fight, autoing down minions just to get your energy up and using abilities on it. So the main combo, the most important thing that you can do on King Arthur is be using your yellow two to knock them up, and once they're in the air, you can just ult them. Um, it will just completely confirm your ultimate, so you can do something like this. You can auto cancel in between, and then launch them into the air. Um, and that's just really important because, like I said, if they react to it at all, then you're going to get your ult down, and that's like one of your main uh, main points of your kit, the best part of your kit. So you want to make sure that you confirm that every time you can. So the best way to do that is to use your yellow stance too on them. Um, and then as far as like trading in lane, really all you're going to be doing is spamming your abilities nonstop. Like I said, your one has a cripple on it, so you can use that to cripple out some people. Um, say like Achilles who's trying to dash you and use his abilities on you and stuff like that. Um, then you can be doing that. Um, just trying to use that, but for the most part, you're just going to be spamming your abilities with auto cancels in between for maximum damage. Um, and you want to be keeping track of your energy and stuff. So I just got my energy gain right there, and then I can go into my charge ultimate um, immediately. But you want to be keep keeping track of that because you don't really want to use your, your stun, your blue stance ult, all that often. Um, because the only time you're really going to ever use it is for uh, confirmation of a kill or if somebody's like really about to get out and you just can't get your energy in time then you want to uh, lock them in place and try and get them. But for the most part you're going to be wanting to just save your ultimate for your um, your energy, your charge stance ult because uh, it's much better. So try to be doing that, especially in a fight. Don't just randomly use your blue stance stuns because it's really not, um, it's it's a good ability, don't get me wrong, but it's it's pales in comparison to the, the charged ultimate. So you wanna be trying to wait out for that and just be using that as much as possible in a team fight because the broken part about Excalibur's Wrath or Sundering Strike, I think it's called, yeah, Sundering Strike, whatever. Uh, no, I think that's the blue stance one, but whatever. The, the charged ultimate, the broken part about it is that you can, there's no cooldown on it. So however fast you get the energy back in a team fight, like say you're hitting multiple people, however fast you get it back, you can immediately ult again, excuse me. So if you aren't familiar with King Arthur, that's what like the main gripe about him is that I can literally ult this Odin, say I'm in a team fight, I ult this Odin and there's like three people around me and I just spam my abilities again. You know, I'd be getting my energy back a lot quicker than this, but say I got it back again, like right here, I can literally ult again. And it does a ton of damage, it's a banish, so you're safe while you're in the air. Um, it's just like so many benefits to it, and it just allows you to um, uh, be broken, basically. You can kind of just dive back lines forever. Um, so some things that you need to be looking out for Arthur, like I talked about before, are cripples, long duration, like lockdowns, like long stuns and long silences, so you can't use your abilities, because um, you really rely on your movement abilities, uh, especially. And then also, the big thing is anti-heal, because glad shield is like, the combo between Glad Shield and King Arthur is like one of the most broken like combos in the game as far as like items plus characters go. Um, let me put my items real quick. So once they do have their anti heal, you do have to. You're going to be a lot easier to kill. Um, if they never build anti heal, you should pretty much run the game the entire game. Like there's no reason you shouldn't. You should be able to dive and do whatever you want for the most most of the game. But if they do end up getting their anti heal, um, you have to play a little bit different. You're going to be doing pretty much the same thing, but you want to be using your ultimate to get out of like uh, danger and be, basically be setting up for your team and diving with whoever um, is diving with you, your jungler or whatever. So you definitely want to be doing that. I mean, like I said, the, really the best way to play him is to just spam your abilities a lot throughout a team fight. Um, like for me, I go blink every single game. So I just blink onto them in their back line, start using my abilities. Um, Pretty much every time my abilities are up, especially when you have full CDR, I mean, they're going to be up pretty often. So you want to be trying to use it as often as possible. And then once you get your charged up uh, ultimate, you just use that on a carry. Something to note with his charged ultimate, uh, King Arthur, is that they can beads it in the middle of the air, but they'll still take the landing damage, which is the bulk of the damage. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a broken ability. So if you're able to get your, your charged ultimate on someone, Let's say I ult this Odin, and he beads right here. He's still going to take this landing damage that he takes at the end, which is going to be a ton. I mean, it's literally 360. Uh, and on a carry, that's just going to be basically true damage with your Void Shield um, and the little protections that they have. Um, so his level order, let me go through real quick. 
kind of did this out of order, but who cares? So you're gonna be starting with your one at level one. Where is the increase level? Here it is. You're starting at your with your one at level one just because um, it does 60 damage each, but also you can use it as a range. So say I use my my cripple and then my say my jungler goes from speed to blue and I have to like walk over to blue to like make sure I get credit for it. I can use my blue stance one to tag like the the uh, melee minions and still get credit for them. So that's why you start with your your one. And then King Arthur is a little bit weird in his uh, his loving order because at level three you actually want to be putting two points into your three. You can also put a point into your two and just have all three of uh, those abilities and then have I guess six abilities because you have three in your stance switch. Um, but the reason you do this is because the increased damage on the the final damage of this spin because there's a little spin to so do damage per tick here and then boom that final damage it goes from 30 to 80 so it's 50 extra increased damage and then also increases by 20 on the spin damage so it's actually a really nice power spike but you definitely still want to level up um your one um you almost always want to level your one you want to get your two at level four and of course your ultimate and then from here on out you prioritize your one your three your three after that and then your two and put points into your ultimate whenever you can because it's uh you're going to be using it a lot and it's going to do a lot more damage uh if you let rank it up damage per hit increased by 10 and then the landing damage can increase by was that 75 or 60 yeah 75 so that's really nice um so like i said so prioritize the one put points into ultimate whenever you can prioritize the three and then prioritize the two last and that's how you're going to be leveling them almost every game um there is some weird scenarios where maybe you could level your two instead of your three after your one if they have a lot of ways to interrupt your three because they can interrupt this because it's a, a decent amount of uh, uh casting time and but this one is takes a, a long time to cast so if they have a lot of ways to interrupt it, a lot of cripples and stuff like that you could probably get away with leveling your two um but most of the time almost every time you're gonna be leveling your three so but really just to keep in mind with the the leveling order is to put two points into your three so you can get that nice little power spike on the damage and then max your one every game there's there's no reason to max anything but your one first um on this character i've heard some other people that like max their three first and stuff like that and i think that's just like flat out wrong um the main point being is that both of these abilities you can hit from pretty far away and that they're really safe to use as damage and also wave clear so you really just want to use those yeah it will be normal anyway um talk about his landing phase a little bit reset the level um so like I said, well, I didn't really talk about this. King Arthur is actually like one through level four isn't really that great. Um, he doesn't really have that great of a one through four, but that's why you do this build. Let me do this real quick. That really is the point of going this build though. Um, it just allows you to kind of get away with rushing this, there's not berserkers, this uh, gladiator shield, getting it as soon as possible. You only need a thousand gold for it. Um, and basically you just want to play the early landing phase to clear the wave and um, get your warrior stacks up. And then once you finally get your your uh, gold for your gladiator shield, you want to basically back and TP right away. You want to do it as soon as possible because like I said, it's literally the best power spec in the game. And once you get back to that lane, whoever you're against, like literally whoever you're against, you're going to be able to start out trading them for the most part. There are a couple matchups where he may get out traded, especially if you're against a good player. Um, and those are like Achilles, uh, Herc. Um, and pretty much just those two. Bologna can do a decent into him, uh, but for the most part, you should win that. And um, I'll show you how to clear the wave with him in a second. So those are the three matchups you have to look out for a little bit, but you're going to be doing a lot more than them in team fights for one, but also it should get to a point where you're out trading them really hard if you're getting a lot of your, your charge ultimates off on them. Um, that's really, like I said, the beauty of his uh kit so the way to clean play king arthur is he does have a cleave on his autos so you want to hit the enemy solo and these minions will walk towards you and then you can use all of your abilities in succession right here where all the minions will be stacked it's going to help your clear a lot um so let me do this real quick i'm just going to clear this wave just to show you how much extra damage you do when you have your your uh yellow stance three at rank two it's really going to increase your damage if you get all the hit off of it, uh, hits on it off if you group up the wave and then you bring them back here to the archers and you just three them all so that increased damage there at the end and that's I wanted. So basically be full clearing at this stage and like i said since his early game isn't really that great until you get the gladiator shield and get points in your abilities and stuff like that um it's really nice to have this at a rank two just so you can full clear that wave and then back up as soon as possible um 
and that's pretty much it, honestly. You just rush your glide shield, TP back in, and start trading as much as possible, and just using your abilities whenever. Just whenever they're up, use them. I mean, the main thing being is using your combo stance, your yellow uh, two, to confirm your ultimate, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then also, you can use your stun in lane occasionally, just for the glad shield proc and for a possible like setup for to get closer with your abilities and stuff like that. But for the most part, you just want to be charging your abilities on the wave to get your your charged ultimate, and you can use that as many times as you really need. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do a quick Q and A if anybody has any questions about like Arthur, maybe something that I didn't cover that we can go over real quick before I end the video. Um, so yeah, ask away chat. They used to be cast, but they changed that. You are not targetable while you're in King Arthur's ultimate. You're not. So it's a banish. Maybe I missed something. If you want me to go over something. So glad shield for first time against a mage? Yes. Yes, it's like the best power spike. Even against mages, you want it. You have way too much to stand, way too much damage because of it. Also the CDR. There's a time you would use Onis over Genji, situation or matchups? No, I probably never do that. Genji's is just way too good on stand switchers, so you almost always win Genji. Fix the bug where his cripple lasted three beats? Yeah, they did, damn. Arthur versus Jorm like? It's actually not too bad for Jorm because he can't be taken into the air by the charge ultimate. So. Would it be a better use the blue three to prot shed before ulting? Well, ideally you're using that a lot of the time. Like you're just using it in combo turns and taking him into the air. So you will have it on them um, if you're using your abilities in succession like you should be. But also, um, they, if you use your blue three, it's not really locking them down at all. And they you can escape a lot of the time, especially if they're a carry or they can just beat. Power spikes on Arthur. I talked about the bad matchups for him. It's power spikes is basically glad shield. And there you go for the rest of the game. Everything after that is uh, going to be good for you. More of a Camelot guy or an Avalon guy? Both. Give a quick full bill for what you usually choose on Earth. I already did that, buddy. Um, what makes Genji so good on Sand Switchers? Well, the reason Genji's so good on Sand Switchers is because they have eight abilities, and it procs on both sets of abilities. So if I, so say like I, so say I'm playing Uller, right? And I use all three of my regular abilities, and then I get a Genji's proc. Not that you'd build Genji's on Uller. Uh, or, yeah, well, not that you build Genji's on it, but if you did, um, use all three of your blue abilities or your, re your regular uh, abilities and your, your bow stance, and then you switch to your axe stance, use all three of those abilities and get a Genji's proc while you use all those abilities. The abilities that you used in that last stance are going to be coming back up uh, very, very shortly because of the Genji's proc, if that makes sense. And it's just, it just gets, gets a ton of value because, I mean, if you think about it, regular characters only get four uses of the Genji's proc, whereas these characters get eight. So it's just a lot better. Um, like a value out of it. Building a tax speed to make take advantage of the passive ever good? No, no, no. You should never build a tax speed for the energy gain. You need to build tank items and tank items only. Or bruiser items. Will Blackburn still be a must after the nerfs? Might not be a must, but I think it'll still be good. Which god counter Arthur? Uh, I said Achilles and Herc are good matchups against him. Everything else is just whatever. He's just a really broken god. But maybe next patch you'll see more cripples. Cripples are good into him. So if the enemy uh, solo is King Arthur and you're like a support, maybe a jungler, you can look for cripples or just long duration CCs that you can really lock him down in. And anti-heal. Anti-heal is really good against him, but that's really what you buy through items. What do you do when playing Kama as Arthur? Oh, that's a good, oh I forgot about that. So Kama is a decent matchup as well. I don't think that it's actually a good matchup. I think King Arthur wins it. Um, but a lot of people do think that uh, that's a good matchup for, for King Arthur. And the way you play Kama into King Arthur is that you can max your, your three and just heal off of every wave, group up the wave, so that you can match the sustain really easily. Um... But also you're just going to be rushing Gladshield just as you would King Arthur and just using all of your abilities to hit King Arthur and poke him while also proccing your Gladshield so that you can keep up in the trades. So that's basically all you have to do. That really is all there is to it. And using your two for heals and stuff. What about Ardeo? That's an okay matchup, but it's really not that great once Arthur has a Gladshield and Warrior Tab by. You're going to get out-traded really hard. Early on, it's not too bad though. Um, King Arthur should, in theory, completely destroy a low-pressure god and make it so... A low pressure guardian doesn't really ever get to get out of the laning phase or do much. I don't really think Guan's good into King Arthur. I think he's probably playing against bad King Arthur's mic. Um, then you're into King Arthur. I don't really like that matchup either because uh, Arthur has a cripple and um, he shouldn't be able to out trade him. So I think we cover most of it. So I guess we go over that quick Q and A. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, quick overview. 
spam your abilities. He really is a spam, uh, like a keyboard smasher kind of guy. Just spam all of your abilities whenever they're up. Uh, be looking to use your charge ultimate and team fights on their carries because it does a ton of damage. Um, play off of your power spike. Power spike, really, because it's just glad shield. Once you get glad shield, you start messing people up. Yeah, I was talking about Herc, how Herc's pretty decent into him, Russian. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it is probably one of the best power spikes in the game, so th that's the exact reason that you want to start taking advantage of it as soon as possible, like proxying, playing super aggro, 1v2, it's going to be really hard for them to kill them. And just kind of test your limits on Arthur. Like, I always talk about testing your limits on everyone, but like on Arthur it's especially um, true and important because it will allow you to get away with a lot of crazy stuff because he's really just that good like, um, with his glad show proxying stuff. So. That's pretty much it. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, if I didn't cover anything, just let me know as well, and I'll try and answer it. Uh, hopefully, I cover most most things. Um, if you got a, a good sense of how to play King Arthur, feel free to leave a like and you know subscribe for more solo content and all that kind of good stuff. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.